So in this video, we're going to be converting our polar back to Cartesian coordinates. So if you remember our little triangle from before we had theta, and that's y and x and r, because that's our circle, right? Then we knew that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So in order to replace our r for our first one, r equals 5, we need it to be an r squared. Well, if you remember, radius of 5 is just a circle with a radius of five. So how do we make an r into a square nice and quickly with an equation is you just square it. So we get r squared equals 25. We can then take our r squared equals x squared plus y squared and replace our r squared with it. And there you go. Now we have a rectangular coordinate and we can check this very quickly in Desmos. So r equals five is our polar and then switching it to rectangular, you can see they're the same. See, doesn't matter which one I use, they're exactly the same graph, so we're good. Okay, so what you have to think about is when we're giving all these points, um, we're plugging in some theta, and the radius is fixed at 5. So theta can be anything it wants as we move around this circle, but the radius is always 5. It works the same way here. So on this one, theta is locked, which means our radii can be anything we want. So if you think of how this looks, our theta here is pi over 4, and we're always used to drawing this line because that's what it is. So you think about it, we have a radius of 1, a radius of 2, a radius of 3, a radius of 4. What it's giving us, even the negative radii, is a straight line. And so what this has is a straight line of pi over 4, an angle of pi over 4. So I'm going to give you two different ways of looking at this one. Let's try the first one, which is the brute force method. So if we go back, we also knew from before that tangent theta is y over x. So what we can do is say that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of y over x. So it allows us to replace it. So now if we come back here and say theta, well, that is the inverse tangent of y over x is equal to pi over 4 we can now re rewrite it again. So y over x is equal to tangent of pi over four. Well, we already know pi over four is one for tangent. So we get one. And so solving this for x, we get y equals one x. And so what this tangent of pi over four is giving us is our slope. So when you plug in tangent of pi over four, it is the slope of our line. So the other way you can look at it is this. If you have your triangle, we already know this is y and x. Our slope of our line, because that's what this is, is change in y over change in x. So what is your y here? Well, if we go back over, we remember that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. So if you think about plugging those in, those are going to give you all the different change in x's, change in r's. So this would become r, cos, r sine theta, sorry, over r cosine theta. And so the r's cancel, giving us sine over cosine. Well, what is that? That is tangent. So there you go. And so you would really get y equals tangent theta x. And our y-intercept is 0 here, so there's no point in plugging it in. But you could just use this as well. If they give you an angle theta, then you could just plug pi over 4 into tangent, and it tells you what the slope is. And there you go. So there is a circle. There is a line. Why don't we check it in Desmos? And so this is what I was talking about. We have our y equals x line. And so these are, are the radiuses. See, radius of 1, 2, 3, all the way up. 15, right? But it's pi over 4 with a radius 1. Pi over 4 with a radius 2. Pi over 4 with a radius 3. Pi over 4, and so on. You get the idea. So theta of pi over 4 is y equals x. And so if you were to plug that in, tangent of pi over 4, this is going to tell us our slope. So we get y equals x. And if you remember, we had vertical lines of x equals, right? x equals 4. That's a tangent of what? Pi over 2. Pi over 2 is undefined. And there you go. You get a vertical line. All right. Let's try one more. So this one is a special one. We need the r squared again. And if I square it, what I'm going to get is a sine squared. So you need to in incorporate an extra trick. If I put an r on, multiply this side by r and this side by r, we end up with this. So r 
equals sine theta. If I multiply both sides by r, I end up with r squared equals r sine theta. And so what we now have is two things we can plug in. r sine theta is y, and r squared is x squared plus y squared. So we end up with x squared plus y squared equals y. And so we already knew x squared plus y squared, that's our circle. So the following part is just a little bit of simplifying. So we're going to move that y over like this. And what we need to do is have a nice, perfect equation of a circle. So if you remember completing the square, what we do here is we take that number that's in front of y. And we cut it in half. So half of 1 is a half. And then you square it. And if you take a fourth here, you also have to add a fourth over there. So we add a fourth to both sides. And we get x squared plus equals 1 fourth. And so there is the equation of our circle. So if we look at them in Desmos, see, just to verify, green and purple are both exactly the same circle. Our circle has just been shifted. So yes, the radius is the square root of a fourth, which is a half, but it's been shifted up a half. And so it's a half, a half, a half. You can see it better in rectangular. So we are a half, a half, a half, and a half. So same thing. So r equals sine theta is the same exact graph as x squared plus that. Okay, so these are the basics. They're going to give you circles, lines, and then this is a shifted circle. So when you see r equals sine theta, or even r equals cosine theta, you want to multiply both sides by r, and it'll allow you to solve it. Thank you.